Hello, it's Kylie Batucci, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Australia here with you. And I wanted to show you a brand new card that I made this weekend. Because I'm all about babies at the moment, I'm going a bit gaga about babies because of my good friends, Mark and Melanie, who of course, in case you haven't heard, you must be literally hidden somewhere <laughs> because I've been talking about them nonstop. But my friends who have just had their twin baby girls and I made this card here. Oh, aren't they adorable? And I did this for, because you'd be thinking, why has it got thank you so very much on there? But I did this for Melanie's obstetrician, for her surgeon, so that he can thank, she can thank her doctor. Um, and it's very interesting because I was like, as I was thinking of ideas of what card would be appropriate to give to her doctor, she asked me to make a card for him. And I thought, you know, I could go down the track of thinking masculine and um, ideas about doctors, but I thought what would be more appropriate? He's giving birth to children all the time. And I'm sure even for a doctor who gives birth, like does all these surgeries and helps these beautiful young children to come into the, the world, I'm sure for him, it, twins are a big deal. So it's very challenging for people to find a card for twins. So I thought that this was just perfect. And the stamp set that I used for this is actually from the annual catalog. So you can purchase this stamp set right now. You don't have to wait. This is from this one here, Sweet Baby. And it is an absolutely adorable set that does come with thinlets, so no fussing, cutting, fussy cutting needed. And that's the exciting part because I know so many of you don't like fussy cutting. I personally don't mind it, but many, many don't. So that is available in the annual catalogue now. If you live in Australia, you're able to purchase that from me. I will pop up the links on my channel uh, just below. So please have a look because you can go straight to my store and shop now. And then the thinlets come with it as well. So you can get it in a bundle. But what I thought would be nice to show you today is how you can turn this into the typical baby card and just have one baby on there. But for those that have twins, you can turn it into baby boy, baby girl. It's really, really versatile. So let's have a look. And I've of course used a different sentiment. We're gonna be saying, yay, it's a girl. So <laughs> let's flip on over and have a look at uh, what we've got here. So I have already done a bit of pre-cutting and pre-scoring and pre-everything so that this will be a really quick video for you uh, because I know there's some busy people out there who don't have a huge amount of time to be looking at videos. So what I have used here is quite a few different layers and a few different techniques that I want to show you briefly. The first one here is just this really thin border. Now, when you use uh, very small, intricate layers, it just adds uh, a real sense of um, weight to your card. And also, it gives it a look of really professional. I don't know what it does, but it just looks so much more elegant with those really fine lines and small millimeters. I love seeing these type of cards. And then of course using our dimensionals. So being able to use the, um, the dimensionals gives it depth. And again, just that really classy look, professional look. So the measurements that I have, I won't put it over there because I realized my face is here. So sorry if I was blocking it. Um, but the measurements that I was using, I only have worked them out in metric. So I'm sorry for all my Imperial peeps, but a usual piece of cardstock, you would probably more than likely cut it in half the other way, which is at 14.9 centimeters. I've done this at 10.5 so that I can have portrait mode, just something I like to do, but most people like it opening up like that way. So it's 14.9 that you would be cutting it. Then the next layer, I did very, very small amount of difference. And you can see it's a super fine, millimeter layer here so it's just two millimeters less so i did this 14.7 uh by what's the other side 10.3 so really small delicate um millimeters then what i'm going to do is come in with a sponge dauber 
and get my flirty flamingo because this is the cardstock that I'm using here just tap that slightly and then what you want to do is just come over to your grid paper and just take a little bit off because you don't want too much on there now you can flick you can drag whatever you prefer to do for getting your ink on there but just sort of um, play with it a bit before you jump right in because it actually is actually pretty good this ink um, you can without having to sponge it off first you can get good depth of color without it being too intense so just do all that. Hopefully you're seeing that okay. Yes, just wanted to check I was in view. And so what this does is again, adds more depth and dimension to your card. And even though you think, oh, people won't even notice it, it's just this beautiful small little accent that adds beauty to your card. And so what you can see here is very very slightly and we'll glue that down to show you but it actually creates that layer to pop because it's such a small tiny layer that it's almost like saying hello I'm, I'm here I know I'm small but I am here so it's still noticeable so we'll glue that down I like using my Tombow glue as many of you know I uh, just find uh, particularly when working with small uh, measurements like this where it's just a few millimeters I find it gives me more wiggle room to make sure that I'm lining this up perfectly I know some people have really good vision and they can put it down but I just find I need a little just a little bit of time just to wiggle it around and make sure that that is lined up perfectly which I'm very happy with that then the next two layers I've done in the whisper white and I've done it at nine centimeters by 13.4 centimeters. That's the smaller one. And then this one's just two millimeters larger. So 9.2 um, centimeters by 13.6. So just ever so slightly larger, but we're gonna stamp on, well, we're actually not gonna stamp on either of them because we have all of our pre-cut items here. So I'll go and glue these two together because they don't need to be stamped on. I always make sure that I stamp before I glue. And so then we'll put that down on there. Again, I've done the Tombow so that I give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And it dries fairly quickly, so you don't want to spend too much time wiggling it around. But it just gives me more confidence because I'm not very good at lining up somehow I always find a way to get it crooked so you can eyeball it here before you stick down but again because you're using the Tombow just give it a little bit of a wiggle if it needs to good very happy with that so that's our layers and again you can just see how beautiful that that dimension is there just those few little layers make such a big difference then what we're going to do is just come over here with our beautiful baby and of course you can go for the blues and make it a boy um, to make it distinguished as a girl we're going to put a little bow on her because it's super cute so what we're going to do is come on in with the flirty flamingo and I'm going to stamp it on a block um, you can actually use the top of your lid but I find I end up very messy and I never clean them and then they look really grubby when I go to do a video so you don't need a lot you just stamp it on the block and then we'll close that up and then we'll just get our aqua painter and I've used the flirty flamingo but just check it first just to make sure that there's nothing on there it's all good and you don't need a huge amount of water um, it's really up to you but don't be afraid of water coloring. Like I'm not the water coloring expert. What is this paper doing here? It wants to be part of the show. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing a few swaps for my team and I was using that paper. <laughs> so it just magically appeared there. So we'll do this. I'm just looking at my um, aqua painter and it leads a little bit of tender loving care. <laughs> it's a little bit punky Brewster. <laughs> it's got like little spikes coming out of it so it's not as um, fine as it should be but as you can see it works great 
and you can just go if you really want to go lighter you can go lighter but it's just so forgiving because you can layer it um, if you wanted to start there you could start there then you can add some more if you wanted to in little sections like you might decide to where the arm is you can do a little bit there a little bit where there is the lines so it's just really good um, I really enjoy watercoloring and I'm not an expert by any means but I just really enjoy how quickly and easily you can put it together now the other thing that I wanted to do I'll just flip to screen only because I've just realized I need to get some crumb cake for the little girl's hair it was really challenging to work out what color would be the best for the hair um, because both Ava and Isla have sort of blondish, brownish hair. And yeah, suddenly the crumb cake came to me that that would be the perfect colour. So we'll just wipe this with a tissue. Do I have a tissue here? Of course not. <laughs> we'll go over this side. <laughs> There's always something to grab in this room. But luckily everything's close by, so that's good. <laughs> baby wipes, tissues, you know, whatever you need. It's all here. So it's good. One good thing about being set up and it's good with Bruno organizing me because majority of the time where he says, put it, it, it is, it actually does go back. So that's good. I'm learning. I'm definitely a messy crafter, but I am learning and I'm happy to learn because it's frustrating when you can't find things. I'm like, where was it? I just had it. Now it's gone. Instead of crafting, I end up stressing myself out because I can't find anything. So it's actually worked out well that this is a little bit spongy. Did you notice that? Because it's spiky, it's made her little hair. Whoopsie. Just drop the baby. Don't drop the baby. So there we go. So it's made the hair like a little bit more realistic because the brush is a little bit spiky that's a pretty cool technique isn't it can you see it okay or come up closer but yeah i really like that idea that you can sort of get your brush to go a bit manky <laughs> is that a word that any of you will know probably only the australians will know that one <laughs> a bit feral <laughs> a bit unkept and then it makes good hair there you go i love it when you learn new things oh and silly me i got rid of the flirty flamingo and I didn't do the little bow why didn't you all tell me oh it's because you're not here live I'm so used to everyone being here live that I didn't have anyone to tell me what to do they're all going will I get some from here <laughs> look at me I'm trying cheats way <laughs> I'll just cut a corner I'm just stamping all that ink on there see if I can sponge door it on oh yeah that looks pretty good there you go, there's a new way of doing it. Let's just use the sponge dauber to put a little bit of ink on. And then you won't use as much. Full of good ideas tonight, I tell you what. I should have changed my little brush though, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll keep using my manky watercolour brush. <laughs> I really need to change this. I wonder why it's doing this. I must have dried it and um, let it dry. A bit disgusting. We'll do it, do the little bow a bit more. Put a few more layers on there so it's a bit darker, and the actual bow bit stands out. Oh, so pretty! And what I'll do is I'll straight away wipe that because knowing me, I'll put my hand in it if I don't, and it'll end up on my beautiful crisp white card here. <laughs> so what have we got here so we've got the little one little cutie and then we're going to stick down her little bow on top and I'll just use some Tombow to stick that down and I had a look underneath and it's not quite the same it definitely needs to be above because if you try and do it underneath it just doesn't look quite right so it's definitely meant to be on top there but what I'll do is I'll I'll probably stick it so that you can see partially the hair there like that. So that's really cute. 
So what I'll do to make sure that it stay it sticks in the right place is only stick it on the sides here. Oh, it's probably a little bit too much. There we go. Take a little bit off there. And then that way that gives me freedom to sort of just move it around without it sticking where the bow is. Oh, look how cute she is. So adorable. <laughs> so then what I did was I cut her out. So before you, when you stamp her, make sure that you're using your stays on. Uh, stays on is really good because it's a uh, alcohol based ink. So if you're using water, water base, like aqua painter, then you want to go alcohol based. If you're using blends, then you would use Memento, which is a water base. So whatever you're using, you use the opposite ink for the outline, which I thought was a really cool tip when I learned that. And it was only recently I learned that one. So I hope that helps. If you're using blends, use a water-based outline because it's alcohol-based. If you're using water-based, like um, aqua painter, then you would want to use your alcohol-based outline. So there's a tip for you. And basically with the cutout, I used the thinlets that come with the stamp set, the Sweet Baby stamp set. So as I said at the outset, no fussy cutting. So that was all done for me, the bow included. And then these ovals here, this is another must have set, which also comes from the annual catalog. So everything is here and the links will be below for you to be able to purchase right away. And remember that if you purchase from me in December, that you will be part of my special, super, super VIP exclusive special January bonus, where we have six demonstrators all doing exclusive videos, live videos and showing you projects that you will not see anywhere else. So you're gonna to wanna to order in December with me so that you can get a ticket to the hottest group in town. It's a Facebook group and the only way to get in is to order. So hopefully you'll order with me in December if you live in Australia. So these ones here are called the Layering Oval Framelits. That's the code there. And you can add that to your shopping cart if you don't have it already because it's a must-have item. This is an essential item for an avid crafter. And the ones that I used, I th I'm pretty sure it's the largest scallop. Yes, so the largest of all of them. And then the oval here is the largest of this smaller set here. But you'll be able to um, just get a, an idea. Oh, actually that one doesn't seem to be the one, is it? Maybe it is. I'll hover over it and see. But you'll be able to guesstimate. Yeah, that's it. You just eyeball it. That's what I do. I'm like, which one, which framework did you? I don't know, just put it up against it. If it fits nicely, then it's good. <laughs> just trial and error. Trial and error is the best, best way to craft, I say. So that's that. So I use this one and this one. So there you go. And then that's just gonna layer. And that's the same size that I used even for the twins one. But I thought because of the, the shape of the card and the size of the card, this will still be perfect on there. Now I've just realized that I have stuck down this Whisper White and not done stamping. Silly Kylie. Luckily I have my Stamparatus here and hopefully this Stamparatus is going to make us look like a professional. This will be a good gauge. This will test it because I had it all ready to go. But for the smaller size, <laughs> oh, Kylie, what are we going to do with you, little Kylie? So this is what I have learnt with the Stamparatus. So first things first, I'm going to make sure that these are very well wiped down because we are going to use, do I have my beautiful... Uh, Shammy here somewhere. I did see you, Shammy. Where did you go? Where art thou, Shammy? <laughs> oh, Kylie. The chaos in the craft room. I do know you're here. I've got literally designer series paper covered over designer series paper. Yay! I knew I'd find it. So let's give this a bit of a Shammy. Stick them back on there. I've probably got ink all over me. 
<laughs> Nothing's new. Live with ink. They don't want to stay on the block, but I think they're looking pretty good anyway. I we'll just wanted to make sure because we're doing operation card measurements and we want to make sure that nothing transfers onto our beautiful white card here. So cleaning is essential in this very precarious situation. So even if you have to, give it a good wipe with your hand even. You resort to all sorts of things if you want to make sure there's no ink. So what are we going to do? So what you can see here is this is lined up to the corner and then we've got the top of our grid here. Now what I'm going to show you, so what I want it to do first is to say um, bring on the bows and it's a girl. So what I'll do is I'll line up where I want this just to get an idea because we're going to put that on dimensionals and that'll show me where I, I want to place these sentiments. So this is where I'm going to wipe it again. Because <laughs> I'm like, you better not dirty my whisper white or I'm going to kill you, Steph. So we want to make sure it's the right way too, yes. So I'll just eyeball it and say probably about there is where I want to put bring on the bow. And I want the It's a Girl to be centred as well and fairly close. But, you know, we're going to play around with it. So I'll show you how I do that. So that's just me estimating. And this is a great way to use this stamp for magic. I'm going to be very gentle and pick these up because I'm trying not to. Oh, I was too gentle. <laughs> I was way too gentle. Anyway, I'll use this as the gauge. So then what we do is what you'll see here on the top is there's actually grids. Now, you may not be able to see it too well, but what I like to do is then just shift it around a little to make sure that it's lining up with the grid line. So you can actually put um, paper behind if you can't see it too well. Um, you could even grab the grid paper itself, the mini grid paper, and line that up if, if you find that your eyesight isn't able to see it too well. And then you can just sort of move, move around the frame until you're sort of seeing exactly where you want it to line up and just making sure that it's straight basically is the main thing and then here we're going to do it's a girl yes so i always make sure i put it here because it's always the other way around so again we're going to do it's a girl and we want that to be lined up i'm lining it with the grid here first there we go you could probably even you can put a stamp set underneath and then it'll lie flat for you so it's not as difficult to move it around. I'm trying not to get my head in the, <laughs> in the camera underneath. But that is how I have found is the best way to get your straight sentiments using the rubber. And it's worked really well. Like, yeah, I've done it a few times. But we shall see if it makes a liar of me. We are soon about to find out now. Ah, scary. Do you get scared when you do things like this? I do. But honestly, the more you do it, the better off you'll be. And, you know, there's going to be times where you make a mistake. You know what you do? You cover it. Or you start again. <laughs> one or the other. We've all been there. We all do it. <laughs> so we'll stamp this up. And it's kind of good having the stamp pad underneath because it, it enables you to push it right down because yeah it's like on an angle it feels a bit strange when you're stamping now the best thing about the Stamparatus too and if you don't have this tool oh my goodness you you must get this it's just the must have a stampers tool so we'll stamp that now the best thing about the Stamparatus that if it isn't correct which is looking pretty good but if it isn't stamped well you can stamp it again because sometimes that does happen to us we're like oh we missed a bit here or you know missed missed a bit out but i find even the stamping is more even as well so it's just a really cool tool so if you don't have it you can also get it with the case at the moment think about it and remember you get an invite to my exclusive event in january if you do so there you go disaster averted 
little silly thing that Kyla did. And I was organised and had it all lined up, but now you got to see me do it. So I hope you learned something with that. Tell me if you did. Look at me, I'm like, should I put this down? I really need to clean it. <laughs> I know. I'll just take that off until I clean it. Isn't this Stamparatus fantastic? Seriously, it's making me look like a professional. I'm just a pretend professional. <laughs> I make mistakes all the time. And you know what? That's okay. We're allowed. It's creative flair. <laughs> Rustic card. <laughs> so we'll stick that to there. And then I'm going to put this on a dimensional, this oval. And same with the little baby. Oh, it's going to look so cute. And we're going to leave enough room to put a little bow. So here's my dimensionals. I have them in my storage because you can have a mini and the regular size and have them side by side in the clear case, which is also available on my online store. Tell you what, I've got everything on my online store thanks to Stampin' Up. <laughs> Thank you, Stampin' Up, for making me so professional. So we're going to put some on her. And it's really important that you use everything. So I have actually just snipped all the edge of my dimensionals so that you can use all of them up as well. And I just want a small one. Oh, there's one dimensionals here that's left. There we go. So that's that one. And then we need the back of this one. But yeah, it's really good using it all. It just feels so good when you use it all. But just whatever you do, I find, you know, use it up rather than just letting it sit there and sit there and sit there. It's like, nope, I'm not allowed to start a new one until I use this. So I don't know what happened with this. Who was this? Oh, right in the corner there. See this? I've got corner and someone opened a new one. ba bow Wrong. That's what my friend Annette would say. Wrong. Oh, look how many of the small dement. Jesse Scott, I'm totally blaming you for that one. She has a thing for the mini dimensionals. She loves them. So I know it's her. <laughs> then we'll take these backings off and I'm putting them directly in the bin so that the backings don't end up on Jasper and Bella at some stage. I've seen them jump up near us for pats. They're our doggies, by the way, in case you don't know who Jasper and Bella are. <laughs> we don't have children. No, they're not our children. Our children don't have dimensional backings on them. <laughs> and there we go. Ta -da! Yes. So I get nervous when it's sticky. It's not Tombow, so I have to actually line it up. And another one here. And we'll close this so we can move that out of the way. So you can see the piece of resistance. The adding of the little baby. So there she is there. Oh my goodness, she's so adorable. So cute. So then we'll get our bow. Now with the bow, I do have the Bow Easy Maker. It is one, it's one thing you can't get from Stampin' Up, but you can get it through me. I will put the link below because you can get it shipped to anywhere you like. So I have an Australian price and an American price. Now what I'm doing is wrapping this around three full times. Okay, so it's been wrapped around three times. And then, because this is quite fine, this ribbon. So if I make, I can do a miniature one, but it's very miniature. And I found it was just a little bit too small, that bow. So have I gone backwards? Yes. Now the tricky bit is being able to grab, and if I wanted to, I could probably grab my tweezers right about now, but I'm being lazy. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to do it on my own. And then I put it through my little loop here. See, it creates a knot and then I pull and are we ready to see this beautiful adorable little bow dun, 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 dun. oh my goodness it's like the cutest bow ever 
anyone who sees this is going to be like total bow envy. They're going to be like, how did you get that bow? I want that bow. And you could even use your bowies. I know of, of um, people who have made numerous bows and just stuck them down with a glue dot and left it on the sheet of glue dots. Oh my goodness. How beautiful is that? So I get my glue dots. Where did I put my glue dots? Yes, they're here. Yes. <laughs> I love it when something goes right. Grab the little glue dot. I just pushed it down underneath so that it's hidden and then lift up. Now it's going to stick to my nail. And then, this is very delicate, so I'm trying to be very careful so that you can see all of the different bows. Anyway, we can judge it afterwards. And then we're going to stick that there. And so I want to get this little bow here to come out. There it is. Yay! Judging the bow. Oh my goodness, that is so adorable. Oh, look at this. It's so cute. I want that one to come out too. Come out, little one. That's it. I think it's because I played with the little tail. There we go. I have to be very gentle with the little tail there. But I want it to be straight. There we go. Oh my goodness. How stinking adorable is that? So I hope you learned some new techniques from this. We did a lot of different things. We used the Stamparatus. We used the Bow Easy. We did some watercoloring. There's a lot of different things. But one thing I hope that you have realized is that you can shop with me if you live in Australia. And if you'd like to be part of my amazing event in January, we have Lisa Curcio, Sam Hammond Donald. We have a demonstrator from Japan, Satomi Wellard. We have Alison Okamitsu from uh, Canada. And who is our other lovely demonstrator that we have? Jackie. <gasps> Jackie! Jackie Williams from New Zealand. So an amazing group of demonstrators that are going to totally wow you. So you're going to want to purchase from us in December to be part of that event in January. So if you live in any of those countries, if you purchase from any one of those ladies, you will get to go to that special event. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching today and please follow us, craftykindly.com. And if you have any questions, comments, make sure they're nice or I'll delete them. <laughs> please pop them below. <laughs> Bye everyone, have a lovely day.